Hello and welcome to another edition of Plus Sized Kite Reviews, where I compare whatever kites I can get my dirty little paws on in big air conditions, focusing on how the kites boost, woost, loop, and how much they help your confidence to ride well and hopefully progress. Today we are going to be focusing on the Cabrina Nitro, which I was riding in the 9 meter size in multiple sessions from 25 to 35 knots on average with some gusts coming in close to 40-ish. I'm going to be comparing it to and discussing some of the previous kites I have been riding, in particular the North Orbit and Evo D-Lab. So if you haven't watched my previous videos, it would be helpful, but not essential to this video, um, to go back and check those out. In this video, I'm going to use the following terms, light wind, mid air, big air, and extreme big air. At 105 kg, Light wind for a person my size pretty much means under 20 knots, and there's not a lot of looping going on unless I'm on something Alula. Now when I mean mid-air, I'm talking about tricks done around 6 to 10 meters in height, which is usually on a 9 or 10 meter kite for me in around 20 to 28 knots. This is the area that I make most of my progression and where you see most of my loop related tricks. When I say big air, I'm talking about tricks or jumps performed around the 10 to 15 meter mark. Uh, and this would take around 27 to 35 knots. And for extreme big air, I'm talking about jumping over 15 meters to 20 meters plus, and would start around the 35 to 40 knots or more area. Now why go to, to the trouble of explaining all that? Well, because the Nitro might just be my favorite kite tested as a mid-air kite, but it's not going to be for free riding or light wind, or as they say, extreme big air. Uh, but before I go into what I mean there, first I'm just going to talk about the bar. Uh, Cabrina were kind enough to arrange for me to test that out as well, so I thought it was worth a mention. Overall, I think this is one of the better bars I've used. It's got a nice feel in the hand, it's fairly straightforward, looks pretty durable and well made with the various components, and that I really like. It's quite a confidence booster. And one thing that was really great was how well the auto unwind works. I was quite surprised that when I was looping the kite two to three times in the same direction, it quite cleanly was going back to baseline on its own. Now in my experience, anything with auto unwind in the bar is going to wear out quite a bit and start to jam up after a few months, especially if you get a lot of sand over it and don't clean it very well after each session. This is why when I bought my new D-Lab, I went for the trust bar over the click bar. I would rather not have to worry about it ever jamming because of the auto unwind a problem I used to get with an old click bar I had years ago. My core sensor bar also eventually got a bit jammy, but uh, I replaced the middle DPUs after about eight months and then it worked again perfectly, thankfully. What I don't like about the Cabrina's bar feel, however, was the little piece of metal in the middle of the bar where the center lines go through. We ride in the cold here a lot in New Zealand because our windiest season is winter and it was pretty nasty to have to touch cold metal every time I held the bar with the middle of my hand. Um, it's something I'm not used to and I didn't really enjoy it. If you're in a warmer climate, perhaps this wouldn't be an issue for you. Um, I also found the weight of the edges of the bar quite chunky and as the wind increased I felt like they had more bearing on my control. I think I would actually like the extra weight in lighter winds with a larger kite size as they would probably help you move a bigger kite around quicker, but I was only testing a 9 meter kite size in 25 to 40 knots most of the time each session and it was a mild annoyance for me not being used to it. I liked that the bar came with 22 meter lines, my favorite size, with the option of 2 meter extensions. Although I do wish more brands did what Core do and have the 18 to 24 meter range with the two meter increments. I doubt many amateur riders would go shorter than 18, but if you're like me and you're into loops, it's nice working your way up and down in two meter increments, which as far as I'm aware, only Core does right now. But let's get on to the kite. So I think everyone knows the Nitro is very, very similar to the Orbit. It was designed by the legendary Pat Goodman, who also designed the Orbit, and the characteristics are so similar that you should really watch my first video uh, where I waffle on about why I love the Orbit so much. Long story short, it's just a super friendly and easy to use kite. Now, where it differs from as much as I can tell is that the Nitro feels a little bit more playful, possibly a little bit quicker, 
and seems to have slightly higher potential vertical lift. However, these features don't necessarily always mean it's a bonus, as it tends to come at the sacrifice of overall stability, which is more noticeable as the wind increases. In the sessions I had, I would start with the Nitro and switch back to the Orbit to get a feel for them in the same wind. I found when it was at the 25 to 30 knot mark, both kites were brilliant, quick, smooth, stable, agile. Uh, the Nitro probably jumped a little bit higher, but as the wind crept up to the 35 to 40 knot mark, the Nitro's friskiness got marginally less stable and a bit more challenging to control. I was very stoked with its woo potential though, uh, as the first session I had multiple boosts over 18 meters and even cracked the 20 meter mark, which was the first kite uh, that I tested that I've jumped that high with. Although the orbit wasn't very far behind, mind you, about a meter on average. However, I couldn't tell you for certain how much of this was from the kite's lift itself or the speed of the kite shooting up to 12. So that extra height might not be a benefit every rider will be able to access without some practice on the kite. If you'll recall in my D-Lab versus Rebel video, I mentioned that in the smaller sizes, the D-Lab could be too fast for a lot of riders, so they would probably benefit more with the Rebel if it's like a 7, 8, 9 meter. This is because I feel like having a fast, more powerful kite is only beneficial if you're at the level to make the most of it. I was recently on holiday in America and noticed a spot with quite a few intermediate-ish riders with their fancy new D-Labs struggling to not constantly oversend the kite every jump and couldn't help but think if they'd only bought a standard Evo or the Rebel, they would have saved some money and been going both higher and they'd landed some of those jumps on the board, not in their ass. Speaking of the Evo D-Lab, I recently borrowed an 8 meter from another local rider for a 35 to 45 knot day and managed to set a Woo PB in a session with a lot of other 20 meter plus jumps. This was my first time on the kite in this size. I would still put the overall power around the same as the XR7 because most of the jumps in the session were around the mark I would usually boost with my XR in those conditions, but the PB was during a monster squall over 45 knots. Where the D-Lab shined was that because it's so much lighter, especially on the bar, it requires a lot less energy. And once you get used to its speed, I found it easier to control, particularly with heli loops coming down. Given it was my first time on the kite, I was amazed that I didn't seem to crash or butt check almost any jumps the whole day, maybe only one, uh, and that's in almost two hours of extreme big air conditions. Something I can't say for any of my monster sessions in the past on my XRs. I always seem to lose control a little bit somewhere with them. Of course, I'm super curious how the XR8 or XR Pro would compare, so if you're watching Core, let's go. Uh, I should add that on that day, I think I would have felt fairly confident riding an 8 meter orbit because I'm used to it, but I don't know if I would have handled a Nitro in an 8 meter size so well. Um, I think I would need a fair bit more time on that kite in particular uh, in the conditions that serious. For the reasons mentioned above, particularly with the kite's flightiness, uh, the slight different speed, lack of stability, and the bar's slightly different feel. I am sure with more use on the Nitro I would be fine, but I just wouldn't be my choice for that top, top end wind at this stage. So back to where it does shine though, that mid-air range to big air range around the 22 to 35 knots. The reason I love this kite here, as I said, was the same reasons I like the Orbit. The direct feel, the ease of it, the light bar pressure, and the magical way it loops and recovers. Uh, this is the real star of these two kites, the loops. Uh, these two kites loop so tight and smoothly and climb so easily that when people do say they do kite loops now, I almost feel they should preface it with, but it's on a nitro slash orbit, because it's just not the same thing. With the kite looping around so fast, as I mentioned in my other video, it means you can pull loops with confidence in lighter to mid-air winds with the kite at higher angles and with less pull so there's just a lot less commitment and physical risk. This translates so well to loop progression as it's such a friendly loop to get used to. Also, if you wait a little bit later in the jump and pull very hard, the kite will do a nice tight high angled loop and be back at 12 very, very quickly. This significantly reduces the risk of messing up your catch as you progress in loops 
or if you try new tricks with your loops. The only other kite I think I've tested that has a faster and more forgiving loop that rises to 12 as quickly is the Rise from Ocean Rodeo, which I also tested in only the 10 meter size. But I did mention in that video that I think a smaller size version might make the kite too fast uh, for me. The D-Lab also loops incredibly quickly, but because it's more of a bow shape, it tends to loop with a bit more power and will often stall for a moment after the loop if you just let the bar out like most kites of this shape tend to do. So you have to be mindful to keep the kite a bit active and moving off to the side post loop to avoid this in the larger sizes, 10 meters or larger. I did rate this as the second best overall looping kite after the rise in my last video because of its combination of its speed both around the loop and its speed back up to 12 because of the lightness of the, and rigidity of the kite, which does make it great for looping even in the larger sizes. Why I would prefer the Nitro or the Orbit to the D-Lab in the mid-air range is because for me, this isn't going to be a session where I'm looking to woos to the moon. These are the sessions I'm usually looking to a little bit more progression, more switch jumps and tricks, and all those things the more confident boosting kites are best for. I was really reminded of this in the second Nitro session I had, where it was a bit up and down, but mostly in the 25 to 30 knot range, with the occasional squall coming through pushing up to 35 so I could woost, but most of the time I was feeling well powered, I was able to hit kickers with confidence on my weak side, which is left foot forward, throw some bigger loops, uh, do some things like slides, and when it was lighter also work on some rotation loops. Uh, front and back rolls. I felt so confident on the Nitro in these conditions that it was just one of the best sessions I've had all year. Now, that doesn't mean I wouldn't have had fun boosting, of course, and doing big loops on, say, my XR or on the D-Lab, because boosting over your mates is always fun. And both of those kites have a better hang time than the Orbit or the Nitro. So if you are really into board offs, there's certainly an argument for that as well. But for me, it's just not as rewarding because I love loops and I love to progress loop-related tricks. Um, I just feel so much more confident going for them on the Nitro. So once the wind starts to get up to the extreme big air range, 35 to 40 knot plus, these are just not the conditions that at uh, my age, I think I'm ever going to be going for mega loop rotations or mega loop board offs. So that's why I enjoy the bigger power monsters like the XRs, the Edges, the Rebels, and the D-Labs, where I can just woos to the moon and throw some big loops on an 8 meter. If I had to pick between the Nitro and the Orbit, that would be a really tough call. I think you're winning with either of them. Overall, I think I might prefer the Nitro under 30 knots and the Orbit over 30 knots but I also feel like I could potentially change my mind back and forth a little bit depending on whichever kite I rode last, or if I spent more time on the Nitro. Keep in mind I have ridden the Orbit for four years. Um, I also only got to try the Nitro in the nine meter size, but I feel very confident I would love the 10 and the 11 as well, based on how much I love the Orbit in those sizes. Now, if I had to pick my current preferred kite in each size, they would be as follows four and eight meter, well, of course, it's gonna be the Evo D-Lab after my last session. Uh, the runner up is probably gonna be the Rebel SLS or the XR. Um, although I only tested the Rebel SLS in nine meter, I just assume the eight will be amazing. In nine meter, uh, it's definitely gonna be the Nitro and the Orbit. They're a bit of a push. As I mentioned above, probably the Nitro under 30 knots and the Orbit over 30 knots. Uh, I think you could boost a little higher on the Nitro, but at the very top end, the Orbit's just going to be more comfortable. Once you get to 10 and up, I'd have to go, go back to the D-Lab because of the low end allowing me to ride in lighter winds on a 10 or an 11, um, and also because of the looping ability. Uh, the Ocean Rodeo Rise is probably going to be my runner-up here because of its looping ability as well. But if you're looking at bang for buck, uh, non-Alula kites, then it's gonna be the Orbit or the Nitro leading the rest of the pack. Both the challenge and the great thing about comparing all these different kites is they're all bloody awesome and so much fun to ride, particularly obviously the ones I've mentioned today. 
It really just comes down to the style of your riding, what you want to do on a session, what you hope to accomplish, the conditions you have, obviously your level, and your budget. I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, you can follow my travels and get some previews on what kites I'm looking at next by following my Instagram, at Jason of Montreal. Once again, if you work for a kite brand and would like me to give your kite a send uh, to make a video, please get in touch. If you have any suggestions for other topics to cover relating to kiting, please leave them in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, of course, uh, to keep this channel growing and hopefully get me on some more kites to test. Until next time, goodbye.